God, thank you in all things. Amen. Thank God for all that he has done for us. Amen. Thank you, choir, for that song. Amen. Always good to hear. Amen. The anointed voice of Brother Franklin. Amen. Just very Franklin. Amen. We thank God for the choir. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God again for our bishop. Amen. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. That's right. We can thank God for him. Amen. Amen. He commissions all of us and gives us the liberty to serve. Amen. We thank God Amen. for that. Thank God for Brother Carr, moderator. Amen. Amen. To Brother Winters, to Brother Brumfield. Amen. To Brother Baldwin. Amen. 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 Uh, to Minister Trower. Amen. To each and every one of us here. To Amen. First Lady Hosey again. We thank God for her. Amen. Amen. Lady Hosey. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Church Mother. Amen. Amen. Good to see her. Amen. To each and every one. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Um, we're yet praying for um, the Robeson Bryant family. Yes. Amen. So let's pray, continue to pray for them and hold them up in prayer. And you know, God will comfort them during this season, this time. Amen. There's a lot of death in the land. Yes. Amen. There's a lot of things going on. Amen. Yes. So we got to make sure you stay alive. Yes. Amen. But be ready at all times. Yes. Amen. Because you never know. Amen. When your time will be. Amen. So we bless God. Amen. We have a hope that others don't have. Amen. Because we know that you are in the Lord. Amen. We know where you are going. To be told, we're better off. Amen. To be with the Lord. Amen. Than to be here in the midst of this world. Amen. Amen. While we're here, right. we might as well make the best of it. Yeah. We might as well make the best of it. Amen. So we're praying one for another. Thank you again, as Missionary Tamaya Finney has said, to everyone that had any part uh, in our giveaway on yesterday. We were able to bless so many. Yeah. Um, and we thank God for the privilege of doing that. Amen. Even our, our, our culinary chef over here yeah. and the barbecue. Amen. It was good on yesterday. Amen. Thank God. Snow cones and the funnel cake. And, uh, the biggest guy almost died yesterday. Yeah, they left me on the step by myself. Yeah, near me, they left me on the step. I was playing basketball and something just said, that's enough. I don't think I was really gross. I didn't have to call 911, but I thought about it. But all I had to do was just breathe. <laughs> hey, but I came out of the time. I didn't play basketball. I used to play basketball all the time. As Nika Scott, he used to be over the gym. And I used to play basketball all the time. And I saw my son walk into the court. I said, I'm going to go see what he got. <laughs> Not knowing I lost what I had. <laughs> but it just let me know that we need to be health conscious. So I, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of my Planet Fitness uh, membership. I'm going back to get on the treadmill. You know, Get on the bike and the stair step. Hey, Mr. Junior, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. He said, He's ready. Amen. But we bless God. It was a blessed day yesterday. Just the fellowship alone. Yeah. Amen. Of us coming together. When the community sees us working together, uh, it, it makes them want to you know, be a part. Yeah. And we thank God for the community for trusting us to serve them. Yeah. Amen. So we bless God. Uh, I'm not going to hold you long. I know this is a holiday weekend, and I know you want to get uh, to your grills and uh, season them and get them ready for grill tomorrow. Oh, um, right. And getting ready for your whatever you want to put on there. Um, children, young people are getting ready to go back to school. Some have started already. Hallelujah. Um, but yet we pray for our young people that God will cover them during this school year. Um, we had to have some young people, well, one of the parents in the church, had to get their children out of one high school and put them in another. So sometimes transitions are hard, um, but sometimes transitions are best. Yes. Um, because we want to make sure that our young people are supported. Uh, so we pray for our young people. We pray for the teachers. 
yeah. teachers' yeah. aides, pray yeah. for custodians and yeah. monitors. Yeah. The county yeah. school district is still looking for the higher monitors just to watch the children in the yeah. home. Yeah. Uh, we pray for the bus drivers and the bus aides, yeah. and, uh, the administrators for the school district. Uh, they make the right decisions for our young people. Uh, let me just take a moment just to uh, take a moment for this because uh, we believe in supporting our young people. So if any of them have any issues in school, parents should be number one. But you got some backup. All you got to do is say the word. I will put my collar on and go to the school. Hallelujah! Because when you put your collar on, they call you father. <laughs> I don't know what religion you are. <laughs> uh, that's what had my my son, my son Jimmy. He, oh, he straightened up. I said, I'm going to I'm going to school tomorrow. I said, I'm going back to school. He said, What are you doing? I said, See you at high school. I'm going to take social studies and math and English. I was ready. I was going to sit in the class, get my book bag, get my notebook, Amen. Just to make sure he did his work. That's what he started doing his work. So I'll do that if we have to. Amen. I'm off on Friday, so I can come any Friday to any school. So parents, be mindful. You have support within the church. You have educators that are here, and and previous educators that that know the school system. Uh, you have some that are working in the schools now. So if you have support. You want to make sure our young people are successful. You want to make sure they get good grades because good grades matter. Amen. Amen. All right, Jeremiah chapter 29. All right, sir. Jeremiah chapter 29. Whenever you want to can get the Bible or on your phone, the scripture. Amen. I want you to see it for yourself. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. Oh, yeah. Hearing by the word of God. Uh, but there's something about a visual aid. Seeing is believing. <laughs> Amen. I think if we see it for ourselves. Amen. Not going to be for you long today. Amen. I think if we see it for ourselves. Amen. We will believe the word of the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. I know I was not here on last week. Amen. It almost seemed like the devil got a hold of me. Amen. But yet God is good. Thank God for recovery. Amen. We get colds and get sick sometimes. But thank God for restoration. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 29, starting at verse number 4. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit thereof, or the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands. No, uh, can I stop there? <laughs> yes, sir, go ahead. This scripture, it's in the Bible. It says, take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons. Mm -hmm. It didn't say wives for your daughters. Come on, sir. But wives for your sons. Yes. Give your daughters to husbands. Come on. They say give your daughters to women. Thank you, Jesus. That they may bear sons and daughters. Yes. That's yes. There's only one way you can bear. That's right. You can't give the same gender and bear. Right. And I believe the word of the Lord. Amen. We have to get back to teaching the word of the Lord. Yes. It's not hate. It's truth. It's truth that a man and a woman can produce. A man and a man cannot. A woman and a woman cannot. That he may be increased there and not diminished. Verse 7 And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. 
and pray unto the Lord for it. For in peace thereof ye shall have peace. Oh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. But thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Of course, to stop there. Just talk to you from a subject, subject, and that subject is God has a plan for me. Amen. God has a plan for me. Look at somebody and just, just affirm within yourself. Just say, God has a plan for me. God has a plan for me. Father, bless your word. Let it be seen, so in good soul. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God has a plan for all our lives. Verse 11 is such a common verse that many people cling to Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 by itself. But when we understand its historical and literary context, most will find that it takes on a deeper, more relevant, and even more powerful meaning for their lives. Understanding the context of a passage of scripture will help us to avoid the human tendency of reading into scripture our own desired meaning and will instead help us to draw out of scripture the original meaning intended by God and his prophets. What is context? Context is the part of a written or spoken statement that precedes or follows a specific word or passage, usually influencing its meaning or effect. And I believe that we would be so much better if we paid more attention to the context of a thing. Uh, let me bring it home. We got some, some men in here that are, that are married to women. Uh, when that woman comes home and she's angry and she's upset and she's treating you like you did something wrong. Most times, brother, it ain't nothing that you did. It's because something happened before they got home. So, brother, we got to find out what the context is. What happened to you before you got home? Did something make you mad at work? Did somebody cut you off on the road? And you wanted to give them a piece of your mind, now you're coming home and give me the other piece of your mind. You keep giving people a piece of your mind, you won't have no mind left. What's the context? What happened before you got home? Um, sisters, you gotta think the same thing. That brother come home, he's been working all day, and he's not as cheery as he should be when he comes home. Well, what made him mad at work? Young people come home from school. And we don't think all times that young people have trials and tribulations and go through things, but they go through things. There's some peer pressure that goes on in school. There's bullying that goes on in school. There are teachers that don't care anything about the students. One teacher told the student, I mean, this is my last year. I'm going back. I'm not teaching no high school no more. I'm going, 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 going back to teaching kindergarten. So what's the rest of the year going to be like? Frustrated upset, stressed out. And many times we look at how a person is acting right now, but what is the context of what happened before they got in front of your face? Because context speaks to what happened before the present action. 
Context also speaks to what happens after. And sometimes while reading the word of God, in order to get context, we need to read what happened before what we read and read after what we have read in order to put it in its proper context. If not, we will keep drawing scriptures out of the Bible to make them mean what we want them to mean. And sometimes we can be so selfish that we use the word of God just to get our point across, but that's not what the scripture was really talking about. And if people believe that stuff, then they'll believe that this is the meaning of the word of God. No, this is what we meant, but that's not what God intended. So we got to know that it is better to get context of a thing. The world on content that entertains them. But context will give you an understanding that reduces the stress of the unknown. Context. You ever have somebody come to you and give you a story about who's bothering them? But get the context. Context means, well, what did you do to them for them to bother you. Take children that grow up together. One child will go to the mother and say, he hit me. Well, did you hit him? Get the context. Because sometimes the one that's crying out is the one that started it. <laughs> in the church, if somebody come to you and say, there's an issue going on in the church. Well, what do you have to do with it? Let's get the context. I don't like people dancing around me, shouting around me. Well, just because somebody stepped on your foot back in 1985, don't mean you don't have to, you gotta be upset with everybody to dance around you. Get the context. If we get context, we'll have understanding of what's going on around. And, and the Bible says it all about getting. Get an understanding. And we have to walk around, we have to stop walking around with the lack of proper understanding of what's going on. Sometimes we need, even need to search ourselves and say, why? That's right. Even the baby's saying amen. We got to search ourselves and, and ask ourselves, and why am I acting like this? Why is my head hung down? David said, uh, even in the scripture, he said, why has thou been cast down, O my soul? Then he talked to himself and said, hope thou in God, for he, I shall praise thee for the help of thy countenance. David had to get to the place where he had to talk to himself and get himself together. And sometimes we got to get to ourselves because some things we're not going to share with anybody else. And sometimes we got to talk to ourselves and get ourselves together because nobody knows us like us, but God. And as God gives somebody discerning of what you're going through, sometimes God wants to give discerning, but some people are not listening, not paying attention. God is always speaking to someone at some moment, and we got to learn to keep our ears open to hear what God is saying here, where he's directing us, telling us what to talk, telling us when not to talk, telling us when to move, telling us when to be still. We got to know context. Come on, somebody say context. Historical and literary context of Jeremiah 29 and 11, the historical context is that Jeremiah spoke these words to the Jews who had been living under the domination of the Egyptians and then the Babylonian Empire before eventually being carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. One can only imagine what it would be like to live under domination of your enemies and then be forced by those enemies to leave your homeland and settle in a foreign country. Let's just unpack this for a moment. They were in captivity. And they were in captivity because of their choices, because of their words, and because of their actions. They were in captivity because they made the choice to take their eyes off of God and put it on themselves. They made a choice to take their eyes off of God and put it on false gods and idol gods. 
themselves in. And then they idolized their own possessions. And they took their eyes. And because they took their eyes off of God, they failed to worship God as God. And because of their choices, they had certain words that spoke against God. Some people do that today. I don't need to go to church today. Oh, I can skip church one Sunday and I'll be all right. And it'll be that week. That, that week, the storm will be so heavy in your life just because you made the choice. Sometimes, you, all you got to do is speak it. Wow. And if you speak a negative thing, negative thing will come to you. You come to church and speak negative, but you'll ex still experience Oh, my grandmother taught me something, and I still remember to this day. She said, baby, be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall be also reaped. Yeah, always said. Always said. And then when I read it for myself, I said, oh, my God. That is the word of the Lord. You will reap what you sow. Oh, my gosh. And we got to be careful what we say. We got to be careful of the choices that we make, and we got to be careful of the actions that follow our choices and follow our words. From literary context, we discover that the previous chapter in, in Jeremiah, in chapter 28, amen, Jeremiah has just pronounced judgment upon the false prophet Hananiah. Hananiah had told the people that God would break the yoke of Babylon and then free the people to return home within two years. And then while this message and then sounded appealing, sounded good, and then to the people, it was a lie. And it resulted in God removing Hananiah from the face of the earth. Instead, Jeremiah tells the people, amen, that they would live in Babylon for at least 70 years. Therefore, they should settle down. He told him, told them, while you're here, build houses. Uh, plant gardens and eat of the fruit of them. Marry and even pray for the peace and prosperity of the city that you are in. Amen. And, and where they found themselves. In other words, don't stop building when you find yourself in the challenges of life. Don't stop building. Because many times we can find ourselves in situations in our life and those situations, amen, will bring about a negative context and content. But I'm here to tell you, where you are in life is not meant for you to stop praising God, not meant for you to stop praying, not meant for you to stop being who you are. Can you just imagine, just imagine just being abducted from Dover, Delaware. Put in the back of a box truck and taken all the way to Mexico. You get into a village that has no cellular service, no phone. The village is self-consistent, has its own hospital, has stuff delivered, but can't nobody leave. They grow their own crops, so they eat their own food. There's no way to get out. Can you imagine being in that situation? You've left your family, you've left your home. I don't know about you, but I would be depressed. Some would be crying and wish that they were home. And uh, Israel found themselves in a place that they were taken from their homes and taken to a far country. And you know what God tells them? God tells them while you're there, build you a house. Plant you a garden. And eat of the fruit and the vegetables of your garden. Keep having children. Let your son look at another daughter and get married. Let your daughter look at another son and they get married. Encourage them to keep having children and to produce and increase. In other words, when you find yourself in a situation in your life that you get, you've gotten out of your comfort zone, you've gotten in a trial or a tribulation or in a wilderness, situation in your life that does not mean that you stop doing what you are doing. Does not mean that you stop worshiping God but to be called, to be told you should be worshiping God even more. Amen. He said build houses. Plant gardens. That means to us today that even in sickness 
we must keep building. Even in trials and tribulations, we must keep building. Even in the morning loss of a loved one, we must keep building. Even in pain, we must keep building. Even in misunderstandings, we must keep building. Just encourage somebody next to you and say, neighbor, keep on building. What are you building? I'm, I'm building my faith. I'm building my life in God. I'm building my worship. I'm building amen, my praise. I'm building my consecration. I'm building my soul so that when God calls for me, I'll be ready when he calls for me. So in other words, I'm going to keep doing positive things, but I've got to keep my eyes on the Lord. Because he said, if you shall seek me, you shall find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Uh -huh. When understood in context, we discover that the words of Jeremiah were spoken to a people in the midst of hardship and suffering and people who were likely desired amen, on immediate rescue and then like one that Hananiah lied about. But God's response is not for, not to provide immediate escape, and then but from the difficult situation. Rather, God promises that He has a plan to prosper them in the midst of their current situation. Saints facing difficult situations today can take comfort in Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven, knowing that it is not the promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering, but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives, regardless of the situation. He can work through it to prosper us and to give us a hope and a future. In other words. There are some things that God is not going to immediately deliver you from. Some things you're going to have to go through. Some things you're going to have to endure. I know you've been waiting on your healing. Keep on waiting. It may come sooner or later. But while you're in that situation, keep building. Yeah. I know you've been waiting on a change for your life. You've been waiting for God, amen, to do something for you, amen. But I'm here to tell you that while you're waiting, keep on building. Okay, Scripture says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Anybody ever got to the place that said, Lord, I just can't wait until I get out of this situation. But if you concentrate on that, you'll lose what you can get out of going through trials and tribulations. You'll lose out on the strength that you can gain, amen, by going. Because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. That means you can go through. That means you can endure. That means you can survive. That means you can, you can, as they say in the country, you can follow through. That means that you can get through, amen, your trials and tribulations. Amen. Look at somebody that's going through something. If you know they're going through something, say, you can get through this. Yeah, you, you can get through this. So the verses immediately following Jeremiah, uh, verse 11, chapter 29, God proclaims through Jeremiah that when you call, on me and come and pray to me, he said, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. When my face is turned to him, I'm here to tell you he is there. You may be at the point of pain, but when you look to God, God is there. You might have some challenges, but when you look to him, he is there. You might have short of finances, but I'm here to tell you, when you look towards him, he is there. You might be sick and tired, but be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. I'm here to encourage you to let you know that reaping season is on the way. Might not be today, but it's coming. Might not be tomorrow, but it's on the way. Might not be next week, but it is coming. Amen. Might not be next year. Amen. But I know if I keep my eyes on Jesus, sooner or later, God's going to make a way out of no way. Sooner or later, God's going to open a door. Sooner or later, God is going to touch my body. But I've got to be in a place and be ready to receive what God has for me. In other words, I've got to put myself in a posture, in a position that I'm ready for God at all times. That's why when I come to church, sometimes I lift my hands like this. 
That means I praise God. But sometimes I turn my hands like this. That means I'm ready to receive. But sometimes I turn my hands like this. Because I'm praising God, but I'm also ready to receive. Because I want to be ready when God is ready for me. When God sends his blessing, I want to be received what God has for me. Thank you, God. The devil wants to turn your face away from God. He wants you to turn away. He wants you to lose faith. He wants you to lose heart. Amen. But I will look to the hills from what's coming my help. My help comes from the Lord. Some get up when deliverance is right around the corner. Amen. How can you tell your blessing is on the way? You can tell when the attack on yourself intensifies. When you get to the place when you get, when you say, and then I, 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 if it ain't one thing, it's another. Anybody ever said that? That's when you know your blessing is on the way. You, you ever said, amen, and I can't win for losing. I'm here to tell you, when you get to that place, a blessing just might be on the way. So, uh, just like the song says, the song says, don't stop praying. The Lord is now. Don't, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. The Lord has promised and his word is true. Don't stop praying because he'll answer you. And I'm here to tell you that it takes faith to praise God in a bad situation. It takes faith to lift your hand knowing that you got pain in your body. It takes faith to come to church knowing that you might be misunderstood sometimes and, and misunderstood about your good intentions. But I'm here to tell you that you gotta praise God right where you are. You gotta praise God in the midst of sickness. You gotta praise God in the midst of trials. You gotta praise God in the midst of tribulations. Because I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for you. Even through your pain, even through your trials, even through your sickness, even through your age. I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for you. So what you gotta learn to do, you gotta act like you know. Look at somebody say, act like you know. You gotta act like you know that God has a plan for you. That means you gotta lift up your head. That means you gotta put a smile on your face. That means you gotta lift your hand in the sanctuary and bless the name of the Lord. That means you gotta have a, a you gotta get rid of that sad demeanor and that sad countenance. I'm here to tell you, you're not the only one that's going through something. That you're not the only one that's got a trial or a tribulation. You're not the only one that might have pain in your hip and your toes. But I'm here to tell you that we've been made and doing for nothing. But joy is going to come in the morning. The Bible says, "Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that which come to try you." That means you're not the only one that's going through something. That you're not the only you're not the only one that your name is being run through the mud. You're not the only one that's going through some difficulty. You're not the only one that's got bad news from the doctor. But I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are, you got to build right there. You got to plant gardens right there. Because I'm here to tell you that God will make a way. God will make a way out of nowhere. And my mind goes back to the song that says, that trouble will pass always. I'm so glad that we've been made door for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So wherever you find yourself, I'm here to tell you, build right there. Can I tell you this? That I got a home that in that long of Delaware. And I thank God for my home. Got a little adjustable bed. That I can lift my head and my feet. To make it more comfortable. And I thank God for it. But that's not the only home I have. But I got an apartment across town in Trialville. And every now and then, I gotta lay my head at my apartment in the midst of my trials. But I got a beach home in Trialville. And every now and then, Yeah. <laughs> 
But God said, I'm not going to deliver you right away. But while you're there, I need you to build houses. While you're there, that means we can't sit still in depression when we go through our trials and tribulations. God will give you a moment, but he won't always give you a whole day. There's too much to do. We've got work to do. There's so much work to be done. We blessed over 100 young people with book bags. But there's probably another three, 400 out there that may not have book bags. Yeah. May not be ready for school. Yeah, we do our part. We got freezers full of food or a food pantry. Everybody don't know. Everybody don't come. We bless the ones that know we try to get the word out to be a blessing. But there is so much more of a need in this world. We can be a blessing too, but we can't do it if our eyes are not on the Lord. Yes. We can be in here in a crowd full of people and feel all by ourselves. Because our eyes are not on the Lord. Don't you know that's what praise and worship is for? Praise and worship is really, that there was this, praise and worship is really for praise and worship. But praise and worship is designed to get our minds off of whatever you were going through before you came in the church and to get us together to praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If your mind is not on praising the Lord, I think that's why we sung songs so long. We sang a multitude of songs for praise and worship. There was only a few songs we sung when I was growing up. One of the most popular ones was Power, Power. Yes. Two words. And we sung that song for 20 to 30 minutes. Waiting for people to get their minds off of what was going on and get their minds on power from the Lord. And if you never get to that place of power, you just might be like that vacuum. Making a lot of noise, but no power. We don't need to be a church that makes a lot of noise. We don't have no power. We got to know that God has a plan for us. Come on, let's stand on our feet. God has a plan for us. Whatever it is, Whatever trial you may be facing, whatever tribulation you may be going through, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask of it, according to the power that worketh in us. The altar is open today for anyone that desires prayer.